Welcome back to the workshop, fantastic having you here. I don't really know what I'm going to do today. This evening, we're going to be doing the live show. It's the afternoon now. I went and did my self-defense class. I go and uh, we, we do dry practice with blank firing pistols. Dry practice work. In a few weeks here, I'm going to be going to Serbia for a shooting course. And in preparation for this, uh, once a week, I go and go and practice the dry skills with the, with the blank firing pistols. It's a lot of fun. So that was this morning and... I guess we're gonna light the forge and do something. And not forget my lunch. I think eating is gonna be as good a thing to do as any. Before going to this self-defense class this morning, I edited yesterday's video. Lots of fun. And still trying to work out what to do for the live show. Every week I have this issue where it comes to Saturday, I still haven't thought throughout the entire week over what I'll do on the live show. And usually I decide about 10 minutes before the show what to make which isn't conducive to a very good live show. So I need to work on that. This is my big forge right here. I was just having a look and seeing how it held up. This here is all, I don't know, I think it's all just scale and stuff like that, mostly from the hammer making. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, any residual flux that drips off the, the pieces that I have in here to protect it. The big issue that I've had with it is my ceiling is actually kind of falling down here. You can see there's a big cavity all here where half the thickness of the ceilings come down. I think the big reason for this is when I made this forge, I thought I'd have three burners, thinking that'd be really useful. I had uh, space for a T-Rex burner, which is a very good other small Venturi burner, and then two of the burners that Sam is selling. But then I, I never ended up using the third because these, these got it hot enough as is. Now what I think that does, that caused a weakness in the casting, which made it deteriorate much easier. You can see that also as the flames lick around, it heats up this steel, this brick's cracked, so this oxidizes away. I mean, these are all, all things to bear in mind, you know. Industrial shops with their big furnaces, they have downtime where they've got to fix things. That's one of the things that, you know, one needs to incorporate into the way that one plans the shop's, uh, plans the shop's time, because I'm gonna have to take some time here in a few more weeks to rip out all of that refractory material and recast it again without the third hole, so I can get the best insulation possible again, and of course have a properly functioning and good forge again. In other news, my workshop is a complete mess. With the leak and the walking around, the floor has so much dirt on it. There's mountains of grinding dust. I've got used belts strewn all over the place. And it's just not good. This isn't conducive to wanting to work here. So I'm gonna be doing a little tidy up. All this grinding dust here on the floor is the stuff that was ground off all of those hammers. I've saved all the scale and I'm gonna save all this grinding dust. I'm putting it in a bucket. I'm gonna weigh the amount of wastage that came off all of these hammers once it's all said and done. A few bits of trash I've got to clean up still over on that table. I've still got dust here, but I don't even worry about it. Next week I've got a lot of handles to make, so there's gonna be so much more dust. All I want now is a little quick clean, and we've done it. This scrap comes from either overheating pieces or just messing up under the power hammer. Thankfully my workshop's quite close to a scrap yard. That makes it pretty easy to get rid of my scrap. win-win. My neighbors get free scrap and I get to get rid of it. So I guess pretty soon here I'm gonna start doing the live show. So I'm gonna need to set up for this. I just realized I did something really silly by putting all these hammers on here. I've got to do a live show and I put all my streaming equipment on here. I really don't like moving stuff twice. I think I have some magic powers. I think I can make this appear in the other side of the workshop just by doing this. Whoa! That's amazing! So I think I'm gonna light the forge. My friend John Michael has shown up, and he very kindly brought s'mores supplies. I think I should be perfectly honest, I don't think I'm lighting the forge mostly because I want to forge. I think it, it is indeed. Mostly because I want to make some s'mores.
Okay, so now it's the time for what you've been waiting for. We're gonna forge some s'mores. This is a little how-to. First step is a hand-forged toasting fork. Step two, make sure your anvil face is nice and flat, good radius edges. Get s'more supplies. Graham crackers. Hershey's chocolate. One marshmallow. Probably only need one. Marshmallow goes on toasting fork. Once you have an even brown coating, and it wobbles ever so slightly, it's good. Hershey's chocolate on the graham cracker. Sharpie, remove from toasting fork. Graham cracker on top. But this is about forging a s'more. Not just making it. Let's run through here. Luckily I got some good machines for this. This is a power hammer! As the name implies, it hammers things powerfully! Say thank you so much for watching this video. We're about to do the live show. If you're new to the channel, go check out some of my other videos. I make all sorts of cool stuff. It's a lot of fun. After I eat this, I'm gonna leave two videos that I want you to check out. I'm not gonna be able to tell you anything more, so be sure to leave a like, comment below, subscribe, watch some other videos, watch those two. I'm gonna enjoy this.